So problem 2317 says that we have a charge at the origin, 2Q. So we'll draw a coordinate system uh, with x this way, y this way, and put a charge plus 2Q at the origin. Plus we have a charge minus Q at a distance, a position D on the x-axis. So we have a distance D to minus Q, and we also have a charge plus Q at a distance D on the y-axis, same distance. And it wants us to find the force uh, on the charge plus Q uh, at a symbolic expression. So we're not going to plug in any numbers, we just want what's the force in terms of Q and D. So we're going to use Coulomb's law, and since this is not a one-dimensional problem, since we're going to have forces this way and that way, that means we're going to have to uh, do this as a vector. So let's start just by figuring out the force uh, on Q due to these two, and we know that the force is sum, so we just have to take the force due to this one and add the force uh, due to that one. So let's start with this one. I like to label them like this, F2Q on Q. So it means 2Q acting on Q. So that's going to follow Coulomb's law. It's going to be K, Coulomb's constant, times the product of the charges, 2Q times Q over the separation squared over D squared. And since this is not one dimensional, we have to do vectors. <coughs> so the vector for this one is, uh, is straightforward because it's on the axis. Right? So these are aligned along the y axis. So we look at it and we know that it's going to be a vector pointing this way because they're both positive, so it's a repulsive force. So this one goes in the positive y direction. So to make it a vector, all we have to do is put a j hat on there. So that's j is the unit vector on the y-axis. So now we've made this a vector. Okay. So now we have to get the force of minus q on q. So f of minus q on q. Of course, it's going to be k, uh, Coulomb's constant. The products of the charges are minus q times plus q. And the separation now is different, right? It's not d and it's not d here. It's whatever this distance is. So it's a Coulomb's law problem going across the plane here. So we know this is a right triangle. And if you're good at your Pythagorean theorem, you know that if this is d and this is d, that this is the square root of d squared plus d squared, which is the square root of 2 d squared. So this is the square root of 2 times d. Right? So the square root applies to the d squared, turns it into a d, and the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. So this side is equal to the square root of 2 times d. And then we take that, and we go and square it. Right? So the square root of 2 times d on d squared. So that is the magnitude of this force. Now we have to think about the direction. So this is positive and this is negative. So it's going to be a vector. It's going to be attractive. So it's going to be a force kind of going down like that. Okay. I've actually made a mistake here. This one is really bigger. You can look at it and kind of guess this one's bigger because they're closer and the charges are bigger. So if that one's big, this one's coming down. But we have to break this now into components. So we need the x component of this and the y component of this. So we can get that because not only is this a, uh, a right triangle, but it's an equilateral. So we know this is 45 and this is 45. So we know that this is this force is kqq over square root of 2d quantity squared, and it's uh, so it's 45 degrees below the horizontal. So we just have to break that in components. So if we now sort of zoom in on it and say. Here's the plus Q charge, and the net force is like that. And we can say, what is it? Well, let's just call it F, F naught. Right? So if that's the force, then we know it has a component this way, and it has a component this way, along the axes like we want. And we know that this is 45 degrees. So you know, you can redraw this one over here, and again, you have a right triangle. So if this is F naught, then this must be. Um, 1 over the square root of 2, f naught, and this must be 1 over the square root of 2. Again, using the Pythagorean theorem, or if you want, you can use trig. Whatever you want to use. Basically, we know each of these components is 1 over the square root of 2 times the, the full magnitude. But now let's think about the directions a little bit. If 
we want the um, x component, it's basically going to be positive 1 over the square root of 2 times the full magnitude because this is pulling in a positive x direction. So that would be what? Let's put all this together. That would be uh, this is square root of 2, and this is 1 over the square root of 2. So when we combine those, we get 1 over 2 times the square root of 2. And then we just keep all the rest. K, the q's get squared. I'm ignoring that minus sign. And let's look at why. The reason I'm ignoring that minus sign is because we're just getting the direction by just sort of looking at the problem by inspection. Okay? We're not really getting the direction from whether we have pluses or minuses here. So that minus we'll just ignore. It's q squared. We took out this 2, and then it's over d squared. And that is the component in the i hat direction, in the x direction. The component in the y direction is exactly the same, except actually it's down. So we'll call it negative minus 1 over 2 square root of 2 k 2 squared over d squared in that direction. Okay. So this is f of q uh, minus q, q vector. So now to get the whole thing correct, all we have to do is add uh, these two to get f total. So we just combine the proper components. We combine the uh, x direction components and we combine the y direction components. Um, and to get the answer, just like the book, we want to get the exact same answer the book got, what we would do is pull out the common terms. Right? So the things that all these share in common are k q squared over d, over d squared. Right? So they all have that. And let's see what's left k q squared over d squared for the i component. This has no horizontal component. This was just vertical. This one has its horizontal component here. So if we take out the k q squared over d squared, we're left with uh, 1 over 2 squared 2. In the i direction. And then what's left <coughs> is two terms make up the j direction. So let's see, once we pull everything out, we can k q squared over d squared, we're left with a 2. For that part, the 2 is all that's left, and for this part, the 1 over 2 squared to 2 is all that's left. That's 1 over 2 squared to 2. Okay. So that's the full answer. So this is a reasonable way to write it. Some amplitude, and then these terms tell you how much of that amplitude is applied in each direction. So your net answer looks something like a strong component that way, a little bit this way, it's going out there somewhere. That's it.